What's up guys? In today's video, we'll be doing something a little bit different. I'll be taking this black Volkswagen and doing a complete exterior detail on it, including applying a ceramic coating. Now I'll be going over all the products I'm using and the step-by-step -step process to cleaning and protecting your car at home like a professional. Bah! Now this car is daily driven, spends most of its life on the highway, and it's black. As you can see, it's filthy, but also it's full of scratches and swell marks. This can be caused from bugs and sand while driving to improper washing. So let's move on to our first step, which is rinsing the car. I'm using an electric power washer with a PSI of 1600. It's not super powerful, but it's plenty for doing a car. You still need to be careful around paint chips already on the car because the power wire chip can hit those edges and lift up the paint causing a big problem. Now that the car is rinsed off, I'm going to attach my foam cannon for a pre-wash. This helps loosen up any dirt and makes the hand wash a little easier. Once the car is covered in foam, we are simply going to re-rinse. So you always want to start with the wheels first. Here I'm soaking the wheels with a wheel cleaner in a foam sprayer. And then I use my separate wheel wash bucket that includes a brush for the tires, a mitt for the wheels, and a detail brush for those hard to reach areas. Just in case you guys wanted to check out the products and tools I'm using, they'll all be linked in the description below. Once the wheels are all done, we're gonna start with the two bucket method hand wash. So one bucket is a rinse bucket and one bucket is the wash bucket. And then you're gonna start from high and go low, making sure you rinse the mitt throughout. Because you're rinsing the mitt throughout the wash, you're less likely to drag dirt across the car and it helps reduce water spots, especially in the sun. often overlooked area is inside the gas door. So make sure not to forget that. I use a detail brush and then rinse it off with a power washer. Now we're gonna rinse the car off, we're gonna dry it, and then we're gonna bring it inside 
to start the decontamination step. So because I know this car sees a lot of highway, and after inspecting, I knew that the paint was covered with contaminants, I'll be doing both a clay and chemical decontamination. There's a lot of debate on which to do first, but I personally like to do the chemical decontaminate first because it makes cleaning the car a little faster. And I'll be using a product called Iron X by CarPro. You simply spray it on, let it dwell for four to five minutes, and it will turn purple when it reacts to the metal contaminants stuck on the paint. I then rinse the car and then start claying. The clay will pick up any leftover contaminants stuck on the paint. So you'll need some sort of lubrication when doing the clay. I'm using Meguiar's uh, Quick Detailer. So I spray the clay and then I spray it onto the surface of the car. And then using a back and forth motion, it'll be gritty at first, but then after a couple passes, it'll get smoother and smoother. So I'll show you in a second, just claying one panel, how much stuff could still be on your paint even after rinsing, washing, and chemical decontamination. Hey guys, so now that the car is washed, chemical decontaminated, and clay barred, we brought it inside, and now it's time to compound. What I'll be using is a Griot's DA polisher with a microfiber cutting disc. The Volkswagen paint is kind of hard, so we want something a little bit more aggressive. And I'm going to be using uh, a complete compound here. And then after the compounding is finished, I'm going to polish the car and then prep it using an IPA wash. And then we'll move on to the ceramic coating. Since I deemed it necessary to use microfiber pads, there is one extra step compared to foam pads, and that is priming the pads. So what you wanna do is just rub compound on all the fibers, and then add the three to four drops of compound that you're gonna use. So first you just wanna dab it onto the paint, and then with a slow speed of around three, spread the compound. To work it in, I move the speed of five or six and then slowly move the DA with a little pressure in a cross hatch pattern. The slower you move the DA, the more correction, the faster, the less correction. And you just wanna continue this process panel by panel, working roughly with a two by two area at a time.
So right there you see me using a pad brush and what it does is it'll help lift the bristles on the pad back up. So after using it for a couple passes, the pad will flatten and it'll become a little less effective. So you wanna stop and uh, brush the pad every once in a while. Since I don't have a three inch or smaller polisher, I'll be doing the smaller and tighter areas by hand using an orange correcting pad and the same compound. So I only tape off the areas of rubber that um, are a little bit more exposed and are more likely that the pad hits it. Um, so these areas right here, I'm taping off and you just don't want the compound to touch it because uh, it will actually turn the rubber white. So it saves you a lot of trouble later um, if you don't have to clean it. As you can see here, there's some paint transfer on the rear bumpers and with the DA, it's a breeze to get through. So our next step is going to be polishing the vehicle. Because of compounding, it'll leave the paint uh, a little bit hazy, so you need to polish to bring back that shine to the vehicle. And it's the same steps, uh, three or four pea-sized drops of the polish onto the pad, where you're gonna be using a polishing pad this time instead of a microfiber pad, and you still use that crosshatch pattern. Again here, for those smaller areas, I'm using a hand pad. This one is black, which is for polishing.
So I'm gonna take the extra step to polish and do some light correcting on the headlights and the taillights. And I'm actually gonna be using a, a one-step polish that has a wax in it, so I'll also add a little bit of protection. I'm gonna be using an orange correcting pad, which is a little bit more aggressive than the polishing pad, uh, to help get rid of some smaller scratches and oxidation on the lenses. After 10 hours of compounding and polishing the car, we have one more step to prep before applying the ceramic coating, and that's an IPA wash. So for the IPA, it's, uh, it's literally just 50% water, 50% isopropyl alcohol, and uh, you just spray it onto the paint and then lightly wipe it down with a microfiber towel. And it just gets rid of the polishing oils and helps the ceramic coating really bond to the paint. Finally, last step of the detail, ceramic coating. I know this has been both a long process and video, so thank you if you stuck around this far. I really felt this was a great opportunity to show you guys that you can ceramic coat too if you put in the prep work. Remember, the prep work is the most important thing. So after just, hey, 12 hours, we are ready to ceramic coat. Included in the kit is the ceramic coating bottle, the sponge applicator, buffing towel, pair of gloves, and the applicator suede. The ceramic coating I'll be using today is a great user-friendly kit by Avalon King called Armor Shield 9. So just to go over what a ceramic coating actually is, it, uh, it creates a glass-like protective layer on your car's paint that will help protect it from UV rays, bird droppings, scratches, and adds a hydrophobic property to it, which you'll see very soon just how much of a difference it makes at repelling water. doing this process, working panel by panel until the entire car is finished. So one of the most important things is remembering that there's a curing time for ceramic coating five hours for the initial uh, drying period, then you can use the car, but you don't want to get it wet for up to two days, and then really don't want to wash it for four to seven days after applying the ceramic coat.
So after roughly 15 hours, the car is fully washed, corrected, and protected. Let's check out the results. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something. Like always, hit that like button and subscribe for more detailing videos. Thanks guys.